what they can expect when they come to the event mm -hmm. for people that are like, oh, what do I expect then? Yeah, I have noticed that people lack the fundamentals, mm -hmm. the, the basics, the principles. You know, when, I, when we spoke before, I know we agreed, we talked about how the principles stay the same over time. It's, yeah. the, it's the methods that change and it's the vehicles that change, but the principles, those same elements that are consistent throughout history, that's what people need to learn because the principles will always stay the same, but the methods will change. So what we're going to be talking about is the principles of finance and how to be financially successful. So can you, maybe let's just give everyone an example of what that is. For sure. So I want them to understand that, for example, credit is good and debt is bad. Yes. Credit is good. Credit means leverage. Yes. Credit is a form of trust. If you have credit that is room for money to use, yeah. then that means you're trusted that you can manage this money and handle it responsibly. Correct. And then you can leverage that to get greater growth and gains and returns on your money so that you can invest it for later and then you'll be net positive. And how to, I like to teach people how to responsibly leverage yeah. that money so that you're making the money work for you. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's where a lot of people fall down and, and it's really important. It's kind of like when someone says, I'm going to buy a rental property and the, the rule always is you better be cash flowing, right? And then these people go, it's negative cash flow. And you got to be prepared for all the hiccups, the ups and downs, just like investing, right? But I, yeah, I've had clients that have done that. They're like, but you know, I'm negative $200 every month. I'm like, well, that's not a very good investment. Well, long term, but I'm like, okay, there's little rules there, right? And I think that's what you're saying is that there is those rules and that people can understand how to get the money working for them because just sitting there isn't, isn't going to do anything and how they can come up with different, like you said, the principles, the basic understanding, the basic learning. And that, yeah, if you have ten thousand dollars in credit card debt, that's not very, that's not very healthy. But if you have, if you have equity that you can use, that you can put into other things that are creating and generating equity, then you know, then you're yeah. in a good position, right? Yes. Yeah. I'd also like to talk about. I'm going to. Sh I, one of my intentions is that people get a wake-up call into the fact that money's not bad. Yes. And and it's something to be used for good and all the good that money can do. Oh, and it's, it's such a tool. And you and I are on the same page with that. It's like, even when we look at, look at how even money has been changed, even our, in our community to help with the outreach fund and to help more people and how we're structuring that and, yes. and the things that are coming to make that even more positive. And, and I think that's the biggest thing if people can really wrap their head around that when I have more money, it is a tool and I can help and serve because yeah. I think that's the biggest thing that people miss in financial education it comes back to those old principles of tithing and serving it really does yes another great thing to talk about is um, money is freedom yes right? yeah. are you let me get your thoughts like I don't yes. obviously we don't want to install negative beliefs in people no and no. and we want to know the truth like are you free if, you know, can you, can you be free? Are you free? You know, if you're uh, making only three thousand dollars a month, maybe in a city where the cost of living is forty five hundred, or can you be free if you're only making thirty grand a year? It's really interesting you pull this up because I want to share something. So I, I have a client who her whole financial picture had totally changed, right? So over the last couple of years, from just sort of getting by to things to literally having an unlimited supply of money. And I've watched some of her just, you know, her just like little Instagram posts and stuff. And I'm going to tell you the biggest difference I learned with her new financial freedom. Yeah. Well, I didn't learn. I know it. But what I've been watching is with her. So before, her little posts were like off to work, long day, okay, you know, kind of I'm in the grind. Mm -hmm. Now it's like, look at me. I'm hiking. I'm going to have some fun. I'm, I'm happy. Look at I, I went and did this little getaway over here. And you know, here I am now, I'm kite surfing. And like, there's all this like adventure that's come in, but yeah. you can see also energetically. So now she's moved to more service because there were some things that she chose to set up in, in place. And I think that that's a big thing. There's a, there's a belief system that a lot of people don't even realize they have it. They have to wait till retirement to have that way of living. Yes. Yeah. yeah. They You're have right. to wait. 
But I think that once they also, uh, people understand that it's a tool and that you're free when you start to set this up. And, you know, there was even a beautiful, that story, they've written a book now, the, the Asian couple from Toronto. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Where they chose not to buy a house. They chose to save and invest and save and invest. And they worked very hard for a number of years so in their thirties, but they sacrificed. I'm going to say they did. So people were like, well, you know, they're the, they're the anomaly. I'm like, no, they sacrificed for their goal and now they're free and now they're able to do, they had a plan in place. And I think, I think they're in their early thirties, if I'm correct. So uh, I might be wrong now. But this is where people have to understand too, that if we can, and sacrifice isn't a bad thing, but if you're willing to give up a few things now and build into that portfolio, then it can generate, as you've seen, and I've seen in many different ways to give you that next level of freedom. Mm -hmm. You know, and even when you don't have a mortgage, you have freedom in another way, right? Or if maybe, yes. maybe you don't want to have a house maybe you just want to be a nomad some people want to do that you know some people just want to travel the world like they are and just be nomadic for a while but then so there's all these areas that what you're saying and I think what it sounds like you really really want to help people understand is it's time now to take ownership of your money learn the different availabilities that you have to ask questions and see where that freedom really comes from yeah that's right and embrace that freedom is possible and freedom is not impossible it is possible it's, it's basically a mathematical equation you know those that that the couple that you're talking about they had about i don't know two hundred and fifty thousand dollars that they'd saved up between them you know yeah. just from family working many years and they said we can put this into a mortgage and get a million dollar home and start a family and all that stuff or we can take this money invest it and live in other countries traveling experiencing the world experiencing freedom diversity culture and they ended up doing that for two three years and they just let the returns of that money grow passively and pay them in that lifestyle and they just withdrew a little bit each month that they lived on they yeah. Got the world. yeah and they didn't go extravagant and now i think they're writing a book and teaching other people and they're having fun right it's yeah. just their life story and and I, that's what I love, that this is the part of money that people can feel that energy and grasp that and start to learn that there are things. What, what do you want to say to the people if they say, okay, I want to come and I want to see something? The people are like, okay, maybe I don't have anything to invest right now. Or, but, you know, I think part of what you're saying too is you got to teach, you got to start somewhere. Yeah, that's right. The right. message I want to share is you have to invest in yourself in order to get better. You know, like you have to invest in yourself time, whether that's books, money, courses, events, a mentor, a coach, there's all kinds of ways. And the more you invest in yourself, the more you get back. So Yeah, you know what? It was it is this okay, I'm, I'm drawing a blank right now. Dan per Perot, the billionaire, is it Perot or Peru? Dan, he's very gruff. He talks like right in your face. He's one of the old school guys. Um, is it Ross Pearl? No. Dan, Dan Pearl? No, not Dan. Anyway, anyway. Okay. What's, anyway what what you, I'm going to get the name for you. But, and the reason I tell you this is he, he really starts talking about people, about you have to invest. So before, there was a whole pie about learning. But investing in yourself and reading and going to seminars and self-help things used to be like 2%. But now, now the encouragement, he's saying, is like over 10% of that should, time and money should go in there because that's what's going to give you the strength, the encouragement, the education to make the other decision. So he talks about the pie and how much you should pay yourself and all of that old kind of way of yeah. being. We yeah. know you have to have a pie. But it, what I found most interesting was the one part he said, do not sacrifice. If you only have $5 that week to put into your own investment, but you can put $20 into investing yourself, go put that money and invest in yourself and your time and take it because that's what's going to help you to learn the foundation, to go do the business, to get the money you need, to meet the people you need, have the courage and to go. And if you fall on your ass, he's like, who cares? Get up again. Like, just keep going. So he says his words are a lot stronger than mine as he's got a lot of uh, followers. But, but it's right. He's like, don't care what other people say, but invest the money and the time into you. And I'm a huge, I believe that myself too. 100%. Amen. Amen. Me too. The, the, the way that I got to find these great financial, you know, deals and investment opportunities that we share with a lot of people in the community is yeah. investing in myself, learning, knowing that they were possible, and then knowing that they were out there, knowing that I could go after them 
that it was just a matter of time, people and relationships. And it, I had to, I wasn't the kind of guy that could attract this way back in the day, not that long ago. But investing in myself and learning and putting in the time and money into the right skills and knowledge allowed me to find it. What would you say to people that may be like, okay, I'm going to come invest, but there's a lot of people right now that have fears in investing in something that they don't understand or that may be new to them. So are you going to address their fears? Because a lot of people have so many fears around losing their money. And even though they hear, you know, it's you, you, some will lose, some will come, but yeah. this seems to be the number one thing I hear even energetically. Like yeah. they're well, afraid constantly. There's so many hidden fears. It's so brilliant that you bring this up because it's perfectly correlated to what we just talked about right yeah. you know people naturally run away from what they don't understand 100 percent. you know what i mean there was a great i don't remember what movie it was but it stuck with me when i was a little kid that said people are afraid of what they don't understand 100 percent. it's natural right it's the amygdala it's that like thing that fires in the brain that's fight or flight i can't tell is that a a berry bush or is that a tiger that's about to you know a thousand yeah. yards away about yeah. to come in we don't know the difference the old yeah. brain is still there it still doesn't know the difference 100 percent. so we naturally deter and run away from that which we don't understand the thing about people losing money is i think they haven't done the work to learn how they lost the money they haven't done the work to learn where did i go wrong where did i go off was it the product i didn't know about enough about the product was it the person i didn't know enough about the person or was it the timing? I didn't know enough about the, top, the timing. Probably just one of those three things. And the great goal is when you learn from it, which one of those three it was, then you can see here's where I want, went wrong. Now I know what to do for the future. Yeah, that bingo, you said it right there. And it's like, that's why I say when you fall down and when it's like, oh, you fall down, well, you just get up. It's like, okay, I learned. But like what you just said, that's the best thing why I don't believe in failure. It's like, okay, if that doesn't work, that just means there's another direction. But I gotta take ownership and accountability and say, all right, what did I need to learn about this so I do something different, right? Yes. And, the same thing. and it's it's there is a like you say, there's that natural programming in the brain. I'm gonna keep yeah. you safe, I'm gonna keep you safe. Why do you think people go back to crappy relationships all the time? Because they know it. They know how to function in it. Yeah. So people have that same relationship with their money. So you guys are listening. You go back to poverty or you go back to a poverty mindset or you go back to fear because you know how to function in it. You know what to do. It's like, oh, I know what to do if I lose all that money. Oh, I'll just, whatever. I, I just know what to do. Nothing. That's really yeah. the old, that, but that's the old space, right? The brain is there to keep you safe, like you said. It's like, I don't know. It's no different than people come to my events and then they they back out because they're like, oh my gosh, I'm starting to feel not well or afraid because you're terrified you're gonna go and you're gonna get a shift. And the people that actually make their way to the event, they go, oh my God, I'm so glad I came, I feel better. Mm -hmm. But right, it's the same yeah. thing with money. It's like, if I have, and that's the big thing I see right now energetically is that people, once you start to learn about your money, you're gonna have to learn how to be accountable. 100%. Or accountable everywhere you put every penny and why. Yeah. And that's, and that's good news too because responsibility means power. Taking, yeah. taking responsibility means you're taking control, which means you have power. You have yes. say, you have choice. You didn't have that before when you just no. left it in the bank and did nothing with it or yeah. did nothing about it. Yeah. You got the effect, right? Exactly. Are you also going to be able to talk to people about, you know, what their relationship should look like with their advisors and the people helping them so they can have a better understanding? Because I know a lot of people think their relationship is, oh, they'll just call me when they're going to make a trade or whatever. Oh, I don't want to bother them. They're busy. And I'm like, yeah, these people work for you. You need to be in contact with them. But That's right. Yeah, you hire that. them. Yeah, yeah, one thing I'm really happy you talked about is, yeah. you know, so here, so something is, I want to address is um, these professionals, right? Myself included. Yeah. Our job is advisors. You're still ultimately responsible. It's Correct. still your say and your decision, you know? Yeah. So for example, a lot of people will default to their lawyer or their accountant. And yeah. actually many, many, many people, they do this and they don't realize, well, the accountant said not to do it, so we're not going to do it. Or yeah. the lawyer said not to do it, so we're not going to do it. Yeah. Well, their job is to advise you. Yeah. It's not to make the decisions for you. No. They work for you. Yes. I would say that again. They work for you. Even me, I tell my clients, I work for you. Yeah. You know, put me to work. Let me do the analysis. Give me the numbers. Yeah. 
My job is just to advise, guide, recommend. Yeah. It's your decision at the end of the day. So when somebody, when I propose something, or I've been, I've heard, you know, stories where somebody proposes something and the account shoots it down or the lawyer shoots it down. It's like, they're, they don't have power over you. No. You've got the ultimate power. You've got the ultimate say. Their job is to guide you, advise you, do the math, show you the legal, whatever, blah, 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 the options. You make the ultimate decision. Yeah. And I think that's where people give too much of their um, power to authoritative figures. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Rather than they're also coming from a perspective of what maybe they're trained in and know they're limiting yeah. scope of things, right? Yes. And one, information. One thing I'm going to share is I'm going to share successful deals that I've done that mm -hmm. have been very, very good for me. And I'm going to bring in a couple of other people that are in my network that have freed themselves from the rat race. And yeah. they're going to talk about how they did it. And they're going to share the deals that they've made. And so I'll quickly tell you about a deal that I did. Okay. It, was a, it was a real estate deal where I made 100% of my money back in eight months. Yeah. And then for the next three years, I made 10% annually. Yeah. And then after, at the end of three years, then I made all my money back. So yeah. I, I, I got my, my principal back, which was 100% of my investment in eight yeah. months. Then I received rent checks of like 10% every year after that. And then on the third year, we sold the property and I made, again, my money back. Now, had I, had I not done that deal, I would have lost out on that amazing return and that amazing deal. And you know what? I consulted a lawyer and he said, I don't think you should do this deal. And that's great because he's doing his job. But you know what? At the end of the day, I still chose. And thank God I chose because it meant 100% of my money back, $23,000 yeah. $23, three years later. Yeah. It's funny, you reminded me of something, an investment I did like that when I was married. And, and I did have my lawyer and accountant say, I don't know, it was out of the States. And um, it was very, very, very favorable. <laughs> Same thing like you're saying. And, and I think that this is also another place of education for people to understand that not every deal, if it has a high return, is a scary deal. And I think that's something that has been bred into people, that yes. if you're not just getting your 3 or 4%, but people don't understand that there's a reason certain institutions want you to, you know, invest in that one little 3%. And there's a place for that. I'm not saying there's not. No. What I'm saying is, is that I think there's a misconception that every everything that is maybe has a nice return is, is bad news. Well, yeah, we've never, I, it's funny because I did a short call for a friend of mine, small group mastermind that she runs. No, yeah. it was very last minute. They had a speaker cancel. She asked me, I jumped in. Yeah. And these people, you know, she said they were looking for passive returns and things like that. So I thought, okay, smart investors. Yeah. And I shared with them some of the deals that we have. And I started with, why is 100% rate of return outside your belief system? Mm -hmm. How come a hundred percent rate of return seems scary to you. Like, cause nobody ever talked about that. You don't know something's possible until somebody says it's possible. Yeah. Still somebody or some piece of information comes into your awareness that certain things are possible, right? Like all this, what you, the work you do, people healing their bodies with their own energy. Who said yeah. that was possible? That's not yeah. on any newspaper, advertisement, no. radio, commercial app. There's no, you know, there's no like, there's nobody talking about that. No, because people are like, we're not trained in that. We're not educated in that. And so it's outside the scope. Yeah. It's like. It's and yet people do it all the time. It's happening in your community all the time. Yeah. All the time. Right. hundred percent. So we're. And that's getting that. It is. It's all possible. So did they look at you a little funny? <laughs> yes. And nobody followed up. Nobody invested. Nobody from that group. Because that group is, it's not in their awareness. They must have thought I was a snake oil salesman or something. Yeah, 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 exactly. Even though that that's where it is, is to get into the unlimited possibilities, you have to expand the brain and the consciousness, as you know, to just look at something. And this is what I like about what you're what you're saying is people just come and learn something different. It's kind of what I say too, like, see the different possibilities, see a new way of direction, see how you can form a better relationship with your money. I always say like, once you're in charge of your money, you're it's easier to make those decisions. It's easier to break free of those old patterns and also too once people start to see different returns coming in and they you know there's also there's also that whole um it's okay it's coming they're telling me to bring this up so i'm going to bring this up right away is also too 
people have to start to let go. And I did clear this a little bit on the radio show today around that greed mentality, right? So when you start to see solid returns and they're like, okay, I want more, I want more, I want more. Mm. And I know like when I was younger, you get all excited. You're like, oh, look at that. And off it goes. Sure. It's nice to see returns, even stuff that you and I talk about. It's great to see them. But I also know that you know, I do, I'm, I like to play a little bit too in the market myself. I have my own little fun, right? I, little things I really understand. Yeah. And if it goes up 20, 30%, I had something the other day that went up 45%. I just cashed it out. I'm like, wow. Oh, I didn't realize it did that. Okay. Let's, you know, move it on. Even though I could say, and other times I'm like, oh, I'm going to take on my initial investment and I'm just going to let it ride. Cause then whatever it's house money is kind of what I look at it. That's just my opinion. So, you know, and so, how I think it's important that people understand that too, that when you're, you also have to keep the money moving, but yeah. also in your comfort zone. So yeah. you don't want to get into, I call it gambling and greed, but even like everything we do with our money is a gamble energy. It really is. But once we remove that, but so what do you say to that? Cause a lot of people mm -hmm. can get caught up in that too. It's great. You have to keep your greed in check. Yeah. I think it's great that we talk about this really greed has to be kept in check. Does. And that's why things like tithing and donating and charity is so important. It's because you give the money away yeah. and you give it to a place that, you know, is, is people in need. It's going to a greater good. It's going to people in need. That will keep your ego in check. That that literally gives the middle finger to your ego. And it's like, it no, we, we don't need to hoard this for ourselves. We should give this and share this with others and people that need it. You know, I want to give you a great thing that happened to me on the weekend. Totally blew my my one of my um, one of my dear souls in our community. She said, "I want to stop by quickly. I have a card for you." And what she doesn't know is, a couple days prior to that, I had gifted out um, two thousand dollars to you know in different programs, things that I was moving through, and and so, anyways, it it was my other form of tithing. Out it goes, and and I was like, "Wow." okay, God, you're asking for a little bigger here. Because normally it's all in chunks throughout the month every day. But this was a one chunk, right? So um, she stops by and she gives me this card. And she goes, I don't even know how to say thank you for what you've done to our family, all of this stuff. I just believe this, this isn't, isn't even enough to say thank you. I'm like, what are you talking about? Okay, thank you. I put the card down. And she goes, and I opened the card and there was $2,000 in the card. This is a principle of money people don't know. And when, when I hear to give, right, you just got to give, it just always finds its way back in different ways. And I was like, I was in tears because now that can also go now and help somebody else, right? So it's like, so spirit always finds a way to bring it back. And it was just like, for her, she just heard this and she wanted to have more, but that's what she had. Yeah. So see, and she didn't even know that that had all transpired. And this is going back to your principles of giving and tithing and people would say, well, oh, who would do that? You know, and then people have these negative space. Well, because she heard to do it, she wanted to do it. And she she knew at some level, but she didn't get that, that exact amount. And then also I had to pay somebody for something. And I heard, you really got to go above on this. So I heard you got to give them $700, which is probably like a $200 job. But I listened, right? So I gave them the 700 bucks and I get this call and they're like, oh my God, oh my God. No, like this is crazy. What do you, I said, I heard it. I said, you've gone above and beyond. I need to just put that over there. And she says, do you know that I've had this goal? And this morning I said, I need $700 to reach my goal. $700 and she's like but I got to do this this and this to get the $700 because she didn't have everything lined up and she goes and then I get your transfer it's exactly $700 and you made me hit my goal and I didn't think I'd hit that goal for another two to three weeks oh my goodness see and this is how what people understand the principles and laws of money so if you listen and you're not afraid right so I could have gone and nickeled and died in the business and what's going here but I'm like no that's what you hear you just you got to give it to them right and so this is what people don't get and then it comes in different ways and they're all just more concerned about what's my job do I have a job am I making that nine to five like you said but these are those principles that if they get like right there look at how many blessings yeah huge blessings uh, what, I'm, what I'm present to 
that I'm really excited to talk about in the event is is karma. You know, like to me, karma is built into the fabric of reality. And that, that's something that I say often. I think I said it on the radio show or the Instagram video that we have. And one of the cool things is there is a like ledger in the sky, you know? There is. You, you know this better than I do because you're way more direct to God than probably I am, definitely. And there is this like universal ledger in the sky that's like what you put in, you, you do get back. You do get back and oftentimes you multiply it. Oh, times seven or greater. I'm excited to talk about this and educate people on this because this is, I mentioned in the Facebook uh, thread when people were talking about tithing and the funds and donating. This is one of the things that we're allowed to test the universe with is yeah. tithing. Yeah. You know, giving to another and, and seeing, not for the purpose of how much you get back, but almost like a fun game. It is. And if people look at that play energy that when you're tithing, it is going to come back. But to trust in that too, right? And to trust that and, and to be discerning to say, yes, I want to tie it in here because there's places and people that you might go, hmm. So there are some principles around tithing, right? People that are that are helping you, uplifting you, maybe that's why tithing kind of started in the churches, but now it's gone outside of that realm to different people in the community. It can look like anything in the community, right? Or just giving into those people that are helping, but then also giving to the people that you see and feel that you need to just do that for them without that attachment, right? So it comes in so many ways, but that law, if people can really understand this about their money when they come and they, they're saying that they will, they will have financial supernatural breakthroughs. And then when there's a, a project or something and you say, look at this, they won't have that fear behind it. Yeah. They'll just be like, okay, I can do this. And building a level of trust, right? And you know this well, because when you're dealing with people's money, there's that level of trust, right? There's a level of saying, okay, you know, what's really happening, my communication, all that through. And and I think that right now people need a lot of that because this whole industry around finance, as you know, in the whole space is changing quite drastically too. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so being in a space where they get educated and they can ask those right questions and understand the principles yeah. of giving, receiving, tithing, breaking through the fear. And the cool thing is this is really the, the principles of flow, like what we're talking about is flow, right? The energy flows, the universe flows, it all moves in as it flows. That's yeah. money too, but you have to keep serving, you have to keep working until you don't have to. Yeah. Then your money can you know, pay for you to do whatever yeah. you want to do. And even then you're still giving, contributing, connecting to people, society, humanity in some way. Yeah, and I think that that's, even in, in my space, people are always surprised. I'm like, they're like, you don't draw a salary. And I'm like, no. Even like, you can't, it's, it's crazy if you ever want to go to a mortgage person, they look at you like, what? But whatever, I'm not worried about that. But it's like, because they don't understand that you create other ways of, of living, right? Other ways of being and other ways of just, and it's never a thought. You don't even think about it. And then you have more to give. You have more to give back into the people and into the community. And, and sure, some of that will shift over time, but it's one of those things people can understand that it's a freedom. Mm -hmm. Because then you're free to build what you want to build without going, oh, I gotta have my nine to five job or how would I pay my bills or whatever, right? Like right. That's, that's, a, that's a big freedom, big, big, big. So we're talking about, we're gonna, we're gonna wrap up soon, yeah. but we're talking about this two day event that yes. I'm putting on. And I'm putting it on because spirit has called me to say yes. that you know people need to be educated yes and like i was just saying before we got on the call i i thought i had too much on my plate i'm not going to do this but that very next day i got a message from spirit saying everybody needs financial education every family needs financial education so yeah so i'm doing this first event to start and i'm going to okay. it with you know the tlc community first yeah. because people have demonstrated that they want the knowledge they want the education I work with a lot of people in the community already. A lot of them become you know, clients and investors and friends. Maybe. What are you seeing and why do you think people need to come to this event? Why do people from your community need to come? Yeah, the reason I really like it is exactly with what you say, is that although we move the energy, I'm really big, like you said, on the education and understanding because the more that people understand 
different avenues of investing, different avenues of breaking free. Like I, and I'll give an example, somebody in the community, um, I, I'm gonna say this gently because I never like to disclose people's names or personal information, but there was something going on in their family. And by them actually working with you, they said, had they not worked with you and taken this knowledge and asked the questions, they would not be able to be in a position to help in their family space at all. But they said by educating themselves with you and going outside the box a little bit and working through their fears, which I helped them work through energetically, and then they were talking to you, they said it was some of the best stuff they've done and some of the biggest blessings this year because now they can see and they've been actually freed in a lot of ways to be able to help where it's pretty it's a pretty big situation where there's help needed and there was nobody else to be able to step up to the plate so they felt very burdened they felt very responsible mm. and then this all transpired and you educated them a lot on how you could help them and they decided to look at something different and now they're able to help and it gives them so much joy and she sent me a, I think last week I got the message and she said, yeah, I, you know, we couldn't have done this had we not educated ourselves. And you took the time to educate them. And I, I think that's the biggest thing that you, the community, everyone, you, you got to keep learning and you got to be able to be, I get chills. You got to be able to be free to just maybe try something different or if you're not ready to at least get the education and when you're ready then they would reach out and say i'm ready to do this now i'm really ready Amazing. and that's why i think that i want people to more say it's time so people are listening saying i want to learn i want to have a relationship with my money because it's a relationship everyone it's a relationship of saying yeah we're friends. I said, you should be friends with your money. You know how different are your friends? This is your, like, it's like your lover in a different way, but you're, you want to treat it with respect and kindness and have a relationship with it and, and not let it get out of hand and not let the arguments come out and not let the fight happen. But you look at it like that relationship and I think that that's from, you know, in my, in the energetic space, what I feel, what I see is that's what you're teaching them. That's what you're showing them. This is a relationship, get the knowledge. And it's no different than when you formulate a new relationship with somebody, you don't always like everything they're bringing to the table. Everything looks great in the beginning and then right, the layers come off and you're like, hmm, what am I gonna do here? That's the same relationship with money. And this is why this weekend I think is important because then they can start to build that foundation and really build it and really say it's time. Because I'm gonna tell you, money world's changing, you know it, we all know it. These next 24 months, like, it, you got to get educated like you now is the time because I, I don't even know like if people wait six months it might be a little bit too late and I don't mean that to sound like fear or whatever but and it's not it's called that you can see things are shifting fast you can see things are changing fast yeah. I'm not saying the world isn't going to collapse guys you know they're, they're, they've got systems to make sure everything moves However, what I see energy is going to move swiftly into changing the system. So they're going to swiftly change into systems because they need to based on the old system that are not, not working anymore. So the more people understand that relationship, the more they'll be like, oh, I'm okay. I'm kind of set up. I understand what I'm doing. I've got someone I can call. I've got my advisor. I'm asking all my questions. Should I pull out? Should I stay in? Oh, what do you feel? Right? And teaching people. And that's what I think here really this weekend is to help people become married in that relationship with their finances because you have to be married to them it's yeah. the way to live married in a happy healthy, a happy way. wealthy way yeah yeah but you are someone who's continually expanding investing in yourself investing in others investing in this time with this person and building this relationship and expanding your mission and your reach in this way like yeah. it's going to happen like it's it, there's something mathematical to it. What if there was something mathematical to it? It's like the more you put in, the more you get back. I don't have the divine mathematics for it, but you know. <laughs> but we all do, and so that's why. Last thing about the event is for everyone that registers, they're getting a special TLC discount. So I'm giving a special promo price for TLC community members. Excellent. And for everyone that comes through from the TLC community, I'm going to donate a portion of the 
sacrifice to the TLC Outreach Community Fund, which is... Which I think is amazing, because that I'm so... I still, that thing brings me to tears. So for everybody that's in it, it just brings me to tears. It's like, we've been flying around, documents and changing things, and yeah, but that community page is going to change. It's going to be amazing. amazing right so that's so generous of you, too that so people like understand like this is us all building together this is us educating together yeah. learning together changing together this is like moving and, and so off on a little break I was sharing this with Michael but I will say this is why you saw Tom and I hook up because we have a bigger mission Michael and I we have a bigger mission of how can we all service the world together because none of us can do it ourselves we can't that's right this is they can bring their friends and families too right yeah, absolutely. Friends and families, definitely. Maybe I'll put together like a young people or a children's like race or something. Yeah. Like teenagers and young people or something like that. Yeah. Just or maybe just do another weekend, which is for children and family. And, you know, that could be down the road. And I'll put it out there as a seed to the TLC community that part of that outreach fund can go so the kids can go for free. Amazing. Well, this is what it means to work together. So it's always a pleasure to create with you and co-create and work together. And it's going to be beautiful beautiful so everyone get there michael now are you going to send out um you'll send out a little bit of extra information as well i know you'll have all the dates you'll have everything laid out and then maybe yeah. a few reminders as well and then um and then sure. yeah, yeah. Then. when when this so at the bottom of this video there will be a link yeah. to the event with all the details everything you do and we'll put it in the newsletter too amazing Sounds awesome. good. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. We'll put it in the newsletter and people that are in the GTA and everybody that's not, well, they'll have to find their way. <laughs> That'll be the e-course. I know you have a lot of people in the U.S. Uh, what I could do is record it and then they could watch it like, you know, on their own time at home or something like that. Yeah. So maybe you think about that. Let me know what you think is the best. And yeah, we have people in Europe, um, Australia, United States, and Canada. Awesome. So in different places in the world. Amazing. Absolutely. All right. I'm so excited. This is going to be a great weekend, great fun. So below, everybody, you can see all the details, and you'll see it come out a couple of times, your friends, your family. And remember, we're building this together to help you get educated, supported, and we always bring to you people that we work with, we trust, we know, we have a platform. And if you're ever feeling unsure, and we've seen this in the community all the time, ask the questions. You don't ask, we don't get Amen. Amen. Thanks. All right. <laughs> Yay! Thank All right. You. <laughs> Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>